Hi, Tom. Hi, Tatiana. How are you today? I am very well, thank you. How are you? Good. It's so good to have you. Especially, I, I know what an adventurous soul you are as you connect leaders through adventure with a gateway to the, to the soul. That's quite a, it's, you know, quite a, an inspirational path, I would say. Mm -hmm. Well, it's great to be here. Um, and it is an inspirational path. Um, adventure teaches us so much about who we are, how we hold ourselves back, um, and, and, and how we, how we be in the world. Um, it really is a very powerful tool for revealing our inner depths. Mm. Yes, I can actually really relate to that. So uh, I, I really enjoy downhill skiing and what I always notice on slopes is how it opens for me like new paradigms and a new perspective of looking even at the same environment in a different way and actually mm -hmm. conditions change. So it's really very close to my heart. Mm -hmm. uh, adventure yeah and even people who who aren't into downhill skiing will can get a sense of that because if you drive if you drive somewhere and then you take the bus that same route and then you cycle that same route and then you walk that same route then you have four completely different experiences mm. when you walk you see all the detail all the shops all the you notice oh this shop looks nice when you cycle you have a little bit of that, but, but you're traveling faster. And then when you're in the car, all you have is your music and the taillights of the person in front of you. This is so true. And I wonder how is it actually relates to our everyday life as well, right? So because uh, sometimes we go, we go through all our life like in a, sometimes like in a fast sports car and sometimes it's on the bus and it seems to be like all stuck and <laughs> crowded, right? Yeah. Um, How much of our lives do we spend just following the taillights of the person in front of us? This is so true as well. Yes. Actually, just to stop and think about that. Hmm. Just being even aware of that and have actually space to, for those hmm. thoughts. Yeah. You know, um, you know Dr. Erin Baker? Um, I don't know if you saw her Facebook post the other day. It was just she went for a walk on the frozen lake outside her house or in her neighborhood. And, uh, and she posted on Facebook lessons from, lessons from snowy walks. Sometimes following in the footsteps of the person in front of you is not the safest path. Or it, and sometimes it is. The wisdom is knowing the difference. That's so... I butchered that, I butchered that quote, but so true, right? It's so true. It's actually made me think like we went for a walk in the forest and you know, because it's so muddy, uh, we kind of went off path, you know, and it looked like somebody walked there. And then we realized it's actually what deers who run there. It's just, you know, there were probably several of them. And mm -hmm. so you could completely end up, especially if you're in the mountainous area somewhere on the cliff, right? Following that route. Mm -hmm. So being aware and conscious. Well, skiing is a perfect example of that. When you're skiing off piste or in the backcountry, you follow someone else's tracks. So you have no idea if they knew what they were doing, how, how skilled they are, um, what equipment they had with them. Yes, yes, that's actually, it's, 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 it's so right. Uh, on one hand, it's like this. On the other hand, I remember last year when we still could go skiing, you know, and we had amazing snow. And, and I was sticking on, uh, on the slopes rather than going off piste. Mm -hmm. you know, and I realized actually how I didn't have enough courage to do that, you know, to just experience something slightly different despite my skill. And then I pushed myself a little bit. So basically, you know, it's this dance between courage, but actually being aware of own abilities. Well, what I, that's interesting that you said courage because I was just thinking the, um, the distinction between courage and wisdom. That's right. That's right. Good. We, we were going to talk about right and wrong, 
but maybe courage and wisdom might be an interesting place to go. Yes, because right or, or, right or wrong, uh, actually, we need both courage and wisdom to, to, to know right or wrong. And actually, that's exactly so. We, we are here to have a controversial conversation, i.e. something where there is not just one way path of looking at things. And of course, for example, going uh, off piste on a slope, there is definitely no right or wrong there, right? Um, and in the same way, it might be like in life of uh, say if you're in a stable career or a stable path and then taking a step sideways and taking someone's go either going to a different company or even changing the industry that might feel like going off piste yeah, or, or starting your own entrepreneurial adventure or starting your own entrepreneurial adventure and so yes and for that we of course need both courage and wisdom Mm -hmm. yeah and there are times when it would be unwise <laughs> to be courageous right. there are times when the wise thing to do is not to go off piste that's right that's right it... but then there are times when the wise thing to do is to jump in with both feet so the question then is, how do you know the difference? Exactly. Exactly. So, so, so how do you know the difference? Uh, have you experienced such situation where you had to choose between wisdom and courage or it's, where it felt like it was a choice? Does it, does it ever feel like a choice? I don't know. Maybe it's not fair to describe it as a distinction. Mm -hmm. because they're not mute you know it's not like um you know there is a distinction between courage and confidence for example right courage comes first and then confidence comes after but mm -hmm. with courage and wisdom maybe it's more like a dance that they do together mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I think the link between them is intuition. Right. Um, you know, for me, one of the things that this path of self-discovery has, and spirituality and um, adventure has, has given me is a deep trust in my own intuition. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And... And you feel it mm -hmm. like, you know, if we go back to the skiing example, sometimes you feel this feels right. I'm going to go, I'm, I'm going to go for it. Mm -hmm. And sometimes something inside you says, this is a bad idea. Right. And, you know, if we come back to life, and starting a business or taking a new job or moving company or, um, you know, I mean, there's so many adventures that we take on starting a relationship, starting a family, ending a relationship, you know, all of these, all of these things involve a huge amount of courage, you know, particularly ending a relationship, you know, unless there's some, <laughs> unless there's some kind of, you know, catastrophic, mm -hmm. you know, someone does something wrong mm -hmm. um, <laughs> um, but it takes courage to say you know this isn't working for me I need to do something else whatever that is and it also takes wisdom um, because so often we stay where we are and we tolerate the situation that we're in because going over there is scary Mm. and in those situations our intuition is screaming at us that's why we have no energy it's why we're miserable the whole time it's why we're constantly you know reading magazines about whatever subject right because it's more interesting than what we're doing 
And the more we don't listen to that intuition, the the harder it almost gets to to make to follow that intuition. So an example for me is moving to Vancouver, which I had an intuitive knowing for 15 years that I had that, that I was going to end up in Vancouver. I didn't know all I knew about it was that there was mountains here and there was ocean and that's it. And I kind of talked about it. I was like, you know, wouldn't it be nice to go to Vancouver? I'd love to live in Vancouver one day. Um, and, but I really, I was just kicking the can down the road and, um, being from England, they have a, a work, you know, like a working holiday visa scheme that you can get up to the age of 30. Mm -hmm. And I knew that that was coming and I knew that I wanted to, you know, test out the waters in Canada and I didn't organize it and I didn't organize it and I didn't organize it. And then 30 came and went. And then all this time, I was getting more and more dissatisfied with my life in London mm. all this time. My relationships were suffering. My work life was suffering because I was just always only part of me was there and part of me was over here. Mm. And then eventually everything all aligned and I, I had the kind of the perfect storm. I ended a relationship, ended a job, had some money in the bank, had a vague idea of what I wanted to do as a career. And so I, so I took the plunge. And yeah, part of me feels like, why didn't I answer the call earlier? Mm -hmm. Because that was really the start of my journey of transformation into discovering who I am. I wrote an article and, and published it the, yesterday i think or the day before about learning to be a beginner um and the the title of that was i thought i was coming to vancouver to learn user experience design but i was actually coming here to, to learn to be myself mm -hmm. and i don't know if i've kind of swept off piece here a little bit but nice. um, but to come back to courage and wisdom that it was a very courageous thing to just pack up my life in London and, and move to a country that I'd never been to before. And there were a lot of people that told me that, I, well, there were a lot of people over here that told me that I should do it. Follow your dream, go for, do the thing. And then there were people over here who were like, Oh, that seems risky. Don't do that. That's dangerous. Is that, is that wise? You know, you have your whole career. Are you going to at least work in film in Vancouver? No. I'm... And uh, where am I going with this? So, uh, do you have a question? Yes, yes, because um, I agree with you that uh, you have been very courageous of you know it's it's very courageous to change the environment where we are and to especially you know you worked really hard to build up a particular career a particular path back in the uk and then to kind of say okay now it's it's a time to go I, even though you also knew you missed this critical moment of uh, 30 right so so clearly the intuition before wasn't strong enough for you to jump or it might have been you know you might needed some more experience uh -huh. and so i'm just wondering how especially knowing that you know that you had intuition before and you didn't do that like what was it in that intuition for you to distinguish so that it's it's a true intuition rather than um, rather than some mm -hmm. type of like, you know, escape well, can, or avoid. I, I can give you a very clear explanation of that. 
so another in in January, I swam in the ocean every day. In this, I this this January just gone. Mm -hmm. um, in Vancouver, some days it was basically freezing, um, and I. That was also an intuitive thing. It was just like a sense in me that I needed to do it, and uh, as at the end of the month in February, I wrote an article about everything that I had learned. Oh no, it was, it was about a week before. And I had, I was kind of fed up with the whole thing. And I was thinking about adventure in general and how towards the end of an adventure, it gets, you know, you're just like, Oh, I want to get home. And one of the things I say is you, you know you've had a you know you've had an adventure when you're really excited to get out of the car at the beginning and then you're really excited to get back in the car at the end <laughs> <laughs> um, and yeah so i was writing about how i was just kind of fed up and i wanted it to be over and you know ugh, and i made this commitment and i'm going to finish it off do these last five days or whatever it is and i started thinking about marathon runners and the wall uh, you know, they say that between mile 18 and 20, between mile 18 and 20, you hit the wall. Mm -hmm. And, and then it's just kind of agony from, from there to the end. Mm -hmm. And so I started thinking about that. And then I was like referencing marathon blogs to kind of pull pieces of that into my article. And then at the end of it, I was like, the, the conclusion of the article was, maybe I need to run a marathon. Maybe that's my next adventure is to run a marathon. And I spent a couple of days, I was like, yeah, I'm gonna run, I'm gonna run a marathon. And, at the, and I was like, hmm, the, this is an intu intuition. And so I need to follow it. And then a couple of days later, I was like, I don't want to run a marathon. I don't like running. I don't want to, you know, lose all the muscle weight and replace it with the, you know, scrawny marathon muscles. I'm not into that. And, and I realized that it wasn't an intuition. It was just a, a distraction. Mm -hmm. Whereas to the Vancouver, moving to Vancouver, that voice didn't go away for 15 years. Mm. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, you know, and there are, you know, we all have people in our lives, ideas, dreams, wishes, fantasies that continually gnaw at us. But we squash them and we put them, push them down. And the more we do that, the more we invite illness into our lives, the more we invite stress into our lives, you know, and you know, and it happens where, you know, someone will spend their whole life going, oh, I just need a, I just need a week away from my boss. I just need a week. I just need a week where I don't go to work. And then they get the flu. And they're in bed for a week. Right? They got exactly what they asked for. Mm. Or whatever it is, they get food poisoning or, you know, whatever it is something shows up in their life mm -hmm. to give them exactly what they asked for because mm -hmm. they weren't following their intuition to ask for a holiday, to ask mm -hmm. for a, a break. Yes. Um, and and the, the, the longer that you don't listen to that intuitive call, you know, and to come back to courage, the longer you don't have the courage to take that step that your body, that your soul is, is telling you, the more severe the, um, you know, the repercussions will be. Yeah. Until eventually you're like, ah, I have to do it. Right. And then sometimes you go too far in the other direction. <laughs> right. But how many times do we hear stories of people who survive car crashes, cancer, um, you know, what, whatever it is, and their whole 
aspect of life changes their whole perspective on this earthly journey shifts because they realize how everything that they were doing up until this point didn't serve them mm. and now they and they had this kind of this shock this come to jesus moment and now from here onwards everything is different Yes, uh, I, I, can, I can really relate to that, Tom. Or it could be everything until that moment was preparation for, for recognizing this moment of knowing. Right? Yeah, like you, well, I, I was saying, you know, I asked the question, what, why, didn't I finish, why didn't I follow my calling earlier? But I didn't finish it. And you, um, you alluded to it, that it was, I, I wasn't ready to, you know, I wasn't ready to discover myself until, mm. until that moment. And everything that I had done along the way was preparing my soul for the journey that I'm now on. Yes, yes. So just uh, connecting with this moment of inner knowing. And for that, we need to give ourselves space and, you know, and and time and opportunity to sleep on it as as a new example with a marathon decision and this is where meditation is so powerful mm. because it's in meditation whatever and you know meditation isn't just sitting cross-legged at an altar with candles burning and chanting on right meditation is just quiet reflection a walk in the woods uh, you know, a coffee with a friend that you haven't seen, you know, a change of context in any way, there is a meditative aspect to it. And when we, um, you know, we were talking about my arm and how I, I injured my arm climbing and you said that that pain, when I try and pinch my fingers and tie my shoelaces and I can't do it because of the pain in my tricep, in that moment, I'm totally present. Mm. And that's really what meditation is about, is about being present and making space for the inner wisdom to reveal itself. Because it's a quiet voice, right? And when we're surrounded by all the noise of life, it often can't make itself hurt. Exactly, exactly. So we kind of unlearn this ability to be present and then we can to consciously relearn it and so this brings us to what we were originally going to talk about which was right and wrong and so many people ignore their intuition so they can do the right thing i was just reading last night about the relationship escalator are you familiar with the relationship escalator no, 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 no. It's like the, the societal construct for how a relationship goes. And there's eight stages, which I'm going to get wrong, but essentially you meet, you date, you become exclusive, you announce it to the world, you make commitments, you move in together, eventually you get married, and then you leave a legacy, children, buy a house. Right? And that's the path. Mm -hmm. And the goal is to get from here to here with one person, and then stay here at the top of the escalator until one of you dies. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And if you do anything outside of that, you're wrong. <laughs> right? If you have two partners, you're wrong. If you, you know, whatever, if you choose not to have children, you're wrong. Um, and, you know, the career ladder mm. is the same thing. The housing ladder. These are all kind of like, there's a right way to do it and a wrong way to do it. Yes, uh, and, exactly. And it's all... Uh, based on some memos, you know, there is like those memos that we receive as children uh, from our family, from schools, from, you know, the, the, from friends, you know, and, and it's becoming so confusing yeah. uh, because, because it's, sometimes those memos disconnect us from what actually is true ours, from our own mm -hmm. true values and actually our own true inner knowing. Yeah. Well, and they contradict each other because the, the relationship escalator doesn't 
tie in with the career ladder because you know as far as the career focused people are concerned this is what matters i have to get more money i have to get more position i have to get more seniority whatever it is and often the family life hobbies adventure suffers as a result of that mm. and then other people care too much about the relationship piece and they forget about the work piece and and um and yeah it's the the inner knowing that suffers because we are we're following the taillights yes the person in front of us and what if both were possible actually what if both those elevate uh, did you know those elevators relationship elevator and career ladder or were possible or if you did something completely different or it's something completely different. So I like, you know, I like this. I have been thinking about this distinction between path and the process. Mm -hmm. so, you know, and that's what, when you described to me right now, this relationship uh, escalate, I thought, yes. Yeah, so that's kind of, it's kind of the process which people then take and like, this is the path I need to go to. And actually there are a lot of different paths, but for every step, you might decide on the particular process you take, but it's very dangerous to confuse both. Mm -hmm. So did you know, because the paths, paths can be unpredictable and, and with the path, we need to connect with this inner knowing and to, to be present in the moment to decide actually what path the universe is also taking me on right now. Because yeah. some, sometimes our attachment to such elevator mm -hmm. actually stops us from moments of serendipity. Yeah, totally. Which brings us back to courage and wisdom, right? Because there's, you know, there's three parts in front of us. Which one do we take? One of them leads o over the edge of a cliff. One of them leads up a mountain to a beautiful view. And one of them just goes to like a back alley in a car park or, <laughs> or whatever. And we don't know which is which mm. but there is we can have a process for figuring that out yes yes and I actually i have quite a resistance what i realized to the word wisdom because um i feel much more connected to this inner knowing and intuition because wisdom for me is almost like what about the beginner's mindset right so because i'm like if 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 we think we need to be too wise, but what about looking at it also at every situation with completely fresh mind, right? Mm. And with fresh eyes. So it's... it's but, then, but then there is an element of wisdom in that, right? Because when I, when I start something for the first time, then I have no choice but to look at it with beginner's mind. And then as I get down the path what will often happen is i start to kind of you know i know i know how this is and this is how it's going to go and then there's problems and i have my paradigm and i can't and then and then at some point i develop the wisdom to be like okay well maybe i don't know everything what are some other angles that i can look at it from what's my intuition telling me yeah. Uh, so, so there, I, I mean, this is a, a brand new thought for me in this moment, but there is an element of wisdom to the beginner's mindset when it's a mindset. Yes. And also what I was thinking is, um, that actually, for example, one needs requires a bit of courage. For example, if coming back to the slope, if I stay on this, um, on the piste all the time, right? Mm -hmm. And I skip that piste, whatever, 200 times, then I'm clearly, it's, it's much more challenging for me to have a beginner's mindset whether uh, when I assess the situation about my abilities and mm -hmm. flop situations of piste, and I let myself go off piste in the beautiful snow, actually, I'm almost from my courage forced to look at the whole environment with a beginner's mindset. So it actually takes also a steps of courage. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And 
uh, what I'm thinking of now is how when you when people climb mountains, most of the injuries and deaths happen on the way down. Right. Interesting. Yeah. And and there's a there's a tie in there for me because there's a complacency. You know, when you've skied the when you've skied that piece a hundred times, you get complacent and you 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 lose your focus. Yes. And that's when you fall over and you break your ankle. And then in the mountains it's the same because the goal the goal is to get to the top of the mountain. And so many people don't realize that actually the goal is to get back to base camp, <laughs> to get back to home. Because if you don't get back to the base camp, it doesn't matter whether you make it to the summit or not. And um, and yeah, so you need to keep that because in the in the mountain metaphor, mm -hmm. you know there's a complacency around right. I've done this. I know how to do it. And you're kind of chatting and you're like, Oh, thank God the pressure's off. Ooh. And then you tumble off the cliff. Yes. Yes. And it's basically this unconscious competence that uh, start developing. And on one hand, of course, it makes execution of things much easier, but on the other hand, it creates a lot of blind spots. You know, and that's why you know there are so many stories about very experienced doctors making mm -hmm. mistakes, and that's why nurses. In, well, I know in the UK that's one of the advantages they introduced uh, the psychology behavior into NHS, and actually nurses always ask ask top um, doctors the questions, so it's part of the process. In mm -hmm. the same way with the pilots, mm -hmm. and actually the same way is coming down the mountain over the top executive, right? So it's uh, yeah. very, very important to be aware when this unconscious competence becomes, mm -hmm. becomes something which actually really holds us back and lets us yeah. you know, take this step. Yeah, Dr driving is a perfect example of that. Exactly. You know, how often do you get in your car and then suddenly it's three hours later and you're in a different city? and you remember nothing. Right, yeah, exactly. Tom, I know you and me, we can speak for ages, right? It's just the conversation is <laughs> just flowing. But our time is coming to the end, and I really, I really enjoyed exploring with you the concept of uh, courage, wisdom, in knowing, intuition, unconscious competence, new beginnings. So thank you so much for showing up so authentically. As you always do. Thank you. Thank you. This is I, I've, I have really enjoyed spending this time with you, and it's funny the the I don't know what part of me it is the insecure part maybe is like I hope the conversation was controversial enough. <laughs> Oh, there are a lot of controversial subjects. So where, where can our listeners find you? Uh, where do you hang out? Um, so they can find me on LinkedIn. Mm -hmm. um, just search Tom Lancaster. And uh, I think the actual website is linkedin.com slash in slash Tom Lank. Right. Um, uh, on Instagram, I'm climbing underscore Tom, okay. um, or uh, shoot me an email, Tom at vortexstrategy.com. Fantastic, and I will put some details uh, on the post. So thank you, Tom. Thank you so much.